All right, fantastic. Thank you uh, so much to the truth workers. And you all will be here, right? We're going to bring you back up to talk to you. Okay, great, fantastic. Thank you. Uh, finally, last and not least, uh, we are proud to bring Russell Frederick to the stage. Russell is a self-taught Brooklyn-born photographer of Panamanian heritage. He's the recent recipient of grants from the Open Society Foundation, the New York Foundation of the Arts, the Brooklyn Arts Council, and the Urban Artists Initiative Foundation. Frederick is a member of the African American Photo Collective, Kamoing, and I'm, I'm sure I've mispronounced that, I, and I apologize in advance, um, and is represented by Keystone Photo Agency in Switzerland. As an educator, he dedicates time to mentoring at-risk youth, uh, young men, with the Kings Against Violence Initiative, uh, in, which, in which he works as the men's program director. The title of his portfolio, which he will discuss with us this evening, is Once Upon a Time When We Were Kings. You may read more about Mr. Russell Frederick at russellfrederick.com. Please join me in welcoming Russell Frederick. Wow, that was great. Um, glad to be here. Glad that all of you will come out. Um, the title, Once Upon a Time We Were Kings, pretty much just speaks about, I am going to uh, pretty much just try to, all right, excuse me, I'm not the tech guru, I'm trying to work this out. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay. Um, so I came up with this title because so many of us may either know someone who has been incarcerated or have a friend of a friend or just even reading about stories of men who have been locked up and hearing really pretty much about them paying their debt to society, but really their struggle just to have a decent, you know, life. So the men I photographed, some have been innocent, some made mistakes, some did some time when they shouldn't have, some have served some very, very harsh time. And with all of their experiences behind jail, the one thing that they all have spoken of is how jail just pretty much deconstructs you of any kind of self-esteem and hope you may have of becoming a normal citizen or a, of a man for the most part. So a photograph here took this in 2001. This is in Rikers Island. So a friend of mine named Alfonso Kinsler. Um, Al was actually falsely locked up. And once he was in jail, I found out, got a call from him. I uh, immediately went to go see him. And this photograph was taken pretty much within two weeks. And I don't know if any of you have ever gone to visit somebody in jail, but you're not allowed to bring anything. But on the route, I spoke to a corrections officer and I said to him that I was a photographer and I would like to take a photograph of my friend so he could see what he looked like behind bars. The corrections officer couldn't guarantee me that uh, my camera would get in. He said I would have to trust him with my camera, and this was the one photograph I was able to produce. After I made the photograph, Alfonso was released from jail after a further investigation was found out that he was innocent. But during that time, he actually lost both of his jobs, and he fell behind on his mortgage for his house. He ended up losing his home. And uh, from that point on, I'm gonna go to the ne next photograph. This is 
Al, I took this picture two weeks ago um, in front of his home. But from 2001 to 2000 to right now, Al has pretty much battled with hypertension. He has been in renal failure for the past four years, on dialysis three times a week, severely depressed, has not been able to get a stable job. Even the charges against him were false and he had them removed. He still has been suffering. He lost his home and he has been pretty much renting out a studio. So what has happened, you know what, to him, I think is millions of other men who are still struggling. And I think one of our greatest challenges right now is how do we defeat this beast of the legal system? Go to the next photo. Photograph here is of Tim. Tim is from Brooklyn. He's 50 years old. Took this photograph last month. Tim was, he was locked up in the 90s. He was a Golden Gloves boxing champ. And while incarcerated, he got into a fight with somebody and they hit him with a lock in his eye and his retina was uh, pretty much um, shattered. So he's been blind in his right eye since and has just struggled with trying to find, you know what, a decent job and just trying to live. Tim right now, uh, constantly in therapy, he works at a pizza shop just uh, making deliveries. here. This is T. T took this picture in 2007. Uh, T had did about, I believe, eight years. He didn't want to uh, tell me exactly what he did time for. But in speaking to T, and some of this work that I'm presenting to you is all of a larger body work I've been doing on Barefoot Stuyvesant. So I've been documenting Barefoot Stuyvesant for the past 15 years and pretty much capturing the everyday life and the people of Barefoot Stuyvesant. So one day as I'm walking down Fulton Street, I saw a T and I just approached him, told him that how I wanted to, I first thanked him for the work that he was doing. And I said to him that I appreciated the work that he was doing on the street and trying to keep our community clean. He thanked me, asked him if I could take a photograph of him, and this was it. And in talking to him, he pretty much said to me about how he would love to be able, that being on the streets was just a better joy, even as a cleaner, than being in jail, and that one day he hoped that he could have his own cleaning business so he can employ some people who have been locked up and give them an opportunity when so many people when society just wants to reduce you to your mistakes and to your past. Photograph over here, uh, took this in 2007 as well. This is uh, Rashid and some of his friends. This is on, on Franklin Avenue. <sighs> Rashid, at the time I took this picture, he was 23. I met Rashid at the age of 19 um, on Fulton Street. I saw him and he had a presence. I already knew immediately that he was involved with some street activity. And I approached him and said to him, I would get, make him a portfolio 
for free if he just came to my studio. And he came twice. And when he came to my studio on the second trip, he pretty much said to me about how he wished he had met me when he was much younger. And he said that how he was 19 and he had five Fs. For those of you who don't know, five Fs is slang for five felonies. And he said, you know, Russ, he's like, you the big bro I never had. And he said, I know if you was around when I was younger, some of the things, the trouble I got into and being a young man, not having an older brother, not having anybody to protect me, I probably wouldn't have gotten into some trouble. At this time when I saw him, I didn't see him for a few years. And um, at this time he had gotten a call saying that someone had died and he was a little depressed. After uh, this photograph was made, haven't seen him again, he's been locked up um, since 2007. Last photo, this is uh, Willie B. This is actually in the uh, Third Ward, New Orleans. Willie B. Uh, met him while I was in, in New Orleans on a fellowship for the Open Society Institute. For one year, I was documenting the aftermath. And while I was down there, Willie B. pretty much uh, saw him, introduced myself, and in talking to him, asked him just what happened, you know, with, with the scar, and asked him to tell me a little bit about his life. And he told me that how, uh, when he was in, in the street, he got into a fight, and a guy tried to pretty much kill him with like a hatchet. And he suffered a severe injury, as you can see, pretty much destroyed his left eye. But what it, to rewind a little bit, Willie B, at the age of 15, had to actually start taking care of his family. His mother wasn't working. He spoke about how not having food to eat, not having electricity, and felt that he had to be a man of the house and start providing. And in getting involved with some street activity, it led to, you know what, him being incarcerated a few times and then him suffering this injury. So with these photographs, I think the one thing which I'm just trying to do with everybody is really find the humanity in all of them and challenge everyone to see the humanity, you know what, in people. So our society, our legal system pretty much discriminates about uh, discriminates against anyone who has a felony if you have a felony you can't get public housing can't vote employment educational opportunities loans you are pretty much uh, labeled for the rest of your life and for all of these men they have pretty much just tried to struggle. They've tried to survive, but their struggles are apparent even with their health. A lot of them are on medication. And where is the support? Now I can say one thing which I'm trying to do now is intervene with some of these, some young men who may be at risk. And that's the work I do with the Kings Against Violence Initiative. It's through photographing, coming across men like Willie B, T, trying to be part of the solution. And that is just something I also just say to all of you. Let's just all try to be part of the solution. Thank you. I think we'll now ask all of our artists in residence to join us in the front. Thank you for the lights.